Travis Baldry's 2022 novel, Legends and Lattes, is a high fantasy novel that prominently references the fantasy universe created by the classic tabletop role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. The work tackles issues such as choice, companionship, and appearance-based misunderstandings. Viv, an orc adventurer tired of her risky and itinerant lifestyle, chooses to turn a new page and start a sedentary life for herself. She abandons her longtime party friends to start a new life in Thune with a large purse and an artifact known as the Scalvert Stone. She believes that this stone will bring her prosperity, so she chooses a place near the mystical Thomic ley lines that run through the city, intending to increase the stone's power. Viv buys a derelict livery and begins transforming it into the coffee shop of her dreams. She discovered coffee in a gnomish settlement while on her journey and has been charmed by it ever since. She hires a woodworker called Cal to assist her with the construction. Together, Viv, Cal, and Viv's pocketbook transform the livery into a cafe. A stone fay guy named Lack arrives to remind Viv that, as a local business owner, she is required to pay monthly tribute to a mystery figure known as the Madrigal. Viv dislikes these threats and intimidates Lack into leaving the first few times he shows around. Cal suggests she put her huge blade, Black Blood, on a wall to show the Madrigals that she means business. Viv recruits Tondri, a succubus, as an assistant. Tondri helps her decorate and gives her business advice. Tondri anticipates a difficult first day because no one in Thune is familiar with coffee. She proves correct, but she employs her commercial acumen to launch an advertising campaign, providing free coffee samples to eager clients for the first two days of operation. These days are bustling in the morning but slow in the afternoon, as the shop just serves coffee. Viv is concerned that the Scalvert stone isn't functioning, but on the third day, customers return. Viv's shop begins to attract regulars, such as a ratkin who arrives first thing in the morning for a latte, a chess-playing gnome, and a student from the local magic school, who is studying the thalmic lines near the shop, much to Viv's dismay. Viv has the scalvert stone buried beneath a loose flagstone in the middle of the cafe, and feels it is to blame for the anomalies that the student, Hemington, is investigating. The shop also attracts a big dire cat named Amity, who usually goes about her business. One day, Fennis, Viv's former party member, pays her a visit. Fennis has always been dismissive of her, and their conversation is laced with tension. He refers to an old rhyme about Scalvert's stone. Viv fears he has come for the stone, so Amity chases him away. After admiring his apron and flower-dusted fur, Viv approaches the Ratkin and asks if he'd want to bake for the shop. Thimble, the Ratkin, accepts the employment offer on the condition that he receive free coffee with his payment, which Viv agrees to. The next day, Thimble shows up with a huge cinnamon roll. Viv gets the ingredients, and Thimble gets to work preparing cinnamon rolls for the shop. The smell entices many new clients and the rolls sell out quickly. Thimble requests a larger oven, but Viv does not have the funds for it yet. Tandry likes more stable fare, so Thimble proposes a biscotti-like delicacy that lasts longer than cinnamon rolls and pairs nicely with coffee. The shop rapidly grows in popularity. With the oven running full-time, the shop grows hot, so Viv asks Cal to add ventilation. The menace of the madrigal escalates, as Kellen, Tandry's former classmate and obsessive admirer, arrives to torment her on behalf of the madrigal's people. Viv is frightened of losing her shop and refuses to pay the madrigal. She seeks the assistance of her former party members, excluding Fennis. The group doesn't understand why she doesn't use violence to address her problems, but Tandry clarifies that Viv is no longer the same person. Tyvus, Viv's former party member, offers to arrange a meeting so she and the Madrigal may talk things out. Tandri is concerned, but Viv declines the use of weapons as the meeting approaches. The Madrigal turns out to be an elegant elderly woman who runs an empire. The woman is acquainted with both Tyvus and Fennis, 
but dislikes Fennis' condescending approach. Fennis informed the Madrigal about Viv's scalvert stone, wanting to cause trouble for her, but the Madrigal had no desire to seize it. She and Viv reach an agreement in which Viv pays her in cinnamon pastries rather than monthly dues. Viv remains concerned about Fennis, who she believes may attempt to steal her stone. She asks Hemington to set up a ward around the shop as an alert system. Kellen reappears, but this time he's on his best behavior. Knowing the Madrigal is on Viv's side, Tandry takes Viv to a picnic after work, where they explore his background. She went to university to escape stereotypes about her succubus nature, but they followed her. Kellen is suspected of having influenced her decision to drop out of school. Viv walks Tandry home that night. She believes Tandry intends to say something, but the succubus keeps mute. Days pass with no strife, until Viv awakens to Fennis's presence. She discovers him lurking around the shop and confronts him. He accuses Viv of betraying him and the rest of their party by keeping the Scalvert stone for herself, despite their agreement. Amity scares Fennis away again, but Viv is worried about what would happen if she loses the stone. Tandri starts sleeping with her in the shop's loft to help her stay alert. Amity awakens Viv and Tandri, warning them of the magical fire that is destroying the business. The trio narrowly escapes with Viv returning for her money and coffee machine. She tells Tandri that she's glad she didn't lose everything, even Tandri herself. They clasp hands while watching the shop burn. Later, Viv realizes that the Scalvert stone has vanished and black blood has been distorted. She lashes out, convinced she can't afford to rebuild, but Cal and Tandri persuade her to try. Many of the store's regulars pitch in to help repair the business and the Madrigal provides labor and materials. When practically everything is back in place, the chess-playing gnome comes back to appreciate it. Viv introduces the stone, and the gnome explains that its true power is to attract similar people. She sees that with the stone, Fennis will only attract wicked individuals. Following a successful reopening, Viv invites Cal, Tandry, and Thimble to join as co-owners of the shop. When Cal and Thimble leave, she shows Tandry the upstairs attic, where she has erected two beds. She invites Tandry to remain with her. Tandry agrees, and they kiss. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.